Hello and welcome. Welcome to worship for Sunday, July 31st. If you're watching this on the 31st on Sunday, we're glad you're here. If you're watching it later in the week, we are glad you're here too. This is our condensed service, scripture, sermon, and prayer, all under 20 minutes, depending on how long I preach. I'm not sure how long I preach. I record this opening and the conclusion before my sermon, uh, but I'll tell you what the sermon is today. I know that before I preach. Uh, the sermon is about laying up for yourselves treasures in heaven, how the best laid plans of mice and men don't always work, and how true wealth is found not in pounds, by which I mean money, but in people. Not in pennies, but in people. And so that is our sermon theme this day, going along with our Holy Gospel reading, which is from St. Luke chapter 12, which reads as follows. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care, and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you. O Christ. God bless you as you hear the word today. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Vanity of vanities. The preacher says, all is vanity. Well, what is vanity? We perhaps know the word vain more than the word vanity. We, uh, we don't even have mirrors anymore. We uh, hold up our phones with the camera turned inward and think, well, uh, do I look just right? Do I look good? Is my hair right? Is my, uh, in the case of ladies and some gentlemen, is my jewelry all good? Am I wearing good clothes? Am I driving the best car? Are people noticing me? What about my house? Has my grass been constantly green? Through the drought? How high is my water bill? <laughs> Status, as we know, is sort of vanity. Because we consider our status, we consider this very American notion of keeping up with the Joneses, and sometimes we're going to be a little bit disappointed with the results because there's always someone with a bigger house, a better car, more money, better clothes, and indeed a greener lawn than we have. We really shouldn't be that concerned about it. We know deep down inside that these are things that really don't matter. In the grand scheme of things, what does it matter if our neighbor has better clothes than we do? Or what does it matter if they have more money or a nicer car or a bigger house? I think we all know deep down inside that if our faith and trust is placed in those things and things like that, well, we're going to be disappointed. But then again, we still try, don't we? We still try and strive to keep up with the Joneses. There's an old saying. My mom had it on her website. She did a stock selling business for many years until Amazon gobbled everything up. She who dies with the most fabric wins. <laughs> well, 
Hate to break it to you, she who dies with the most fabric is still dead. Doesn't matter how much money you have, how much fabric you have, how green your lawn is, how big your car is, how nice your house is. In the grand scheme of things, which is our own mortality and eternal life, death is the great equalizer. Sure, someone might have a nicer tombstone in it, death or maybe a Wikipedia entry, but standing before the throne of God, it's all vanity. Vanity washes away like a sandcastle on the seashore. We have this interesting parable in our gospel lesson. If, if you notice, a lot of times our Old Testament lessons and our gospel lessons go hand in hand and they're very connected and we see vanity but in a different way. We see what I like to call the parable of the foolish wise man or the wise fool. Because on paper, what he's doing seems to be a good idea. He says, well, uh, I've had a good year out in the fields. I need... I've got too much grain. I can't store it all. I don't want to keep it outside lest the rain come and ruin it. I'm going to build bigger barns and bigger storehouses so I can keep my grain. That's kind of why we have banks and savings accounts after all. We don't want to keep the money under the pillow. And, and by the way, if you're keeping your money under the pillow, why, why don't you tell me, and I've got some friends who uh, might be able to find your pillow there. The uh, point is, we keep stuff in bank accounts to keep it safe. Just like this guy did. He's doing, he's banking his goods, maybe saving it for a rainy day. Seems like a good idea, doesn't it? We see elsewhere in the Bible this notion that saving is good. But the problem is one of trust. The problem isn't what he did, but where he was placing his trust. He says, uh, he said, he said, he said to my soul, and it's interesting language here that Jesus employs. His character said to his soul, soul, you have ample goods laid out for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. Didn't we see that in our Old Testament lesson too? This notion that it's okay, essentially, to eat, drink, and be merry, to enjoy the toil of one's labor. The question is one of where you're placing your trust. Where your foundation is, or him, how firm a foundation. If our foundation is placed in our stuff, or in our ability to save, or our ability to make plans, it's not a firm foundation after all. Because in the end, all our stuff is simply vanity. And vanity washes away. And yet, we need that stuff. I, I, I think I remember someone saying, and this was a story relayed to me uh, yesterday. I can't remember who related it. It was really, really clever. She said uh, a girl was going up and putting money in the offering plate, and she turned to her dad and said, Dad, why does God need money? And the dad said, well, God doesn't need money, but God has an electric bill. <laughs> and so we know that we need to save for everyday stuff. We know that we need to have some possessions to live by. We need to have some clothes, especially up here in western New York when the winter comes. Folks down in Florida, it's pretty easy for you. But where are we placing our faith and where are we placing our trust? If it's in that stuff, well, the best laid plans of mice and men are going to kind of crumble. Because our soul can be required of us at any time. And if we have placed our faith in ourselves, in our own ability to save, in our own stuff, rather than in Christ Jesus, crucified for us, we're going to get to heaven. We're going to get at least to the gates. To the judgment seat of God, and we're going to say, well, God, I had all this stuff. 
I saved up. I saved well. I invested well. Maybe I even gave some of it away. I do not know you. Our salvation is accomplished not by what we do, not by our stuff, but by our faith in Jesus Christ and him crucified for the forgiveness of our sins in his death and in his resurrection so we too can rise to new life in Christ. That's where we ought to be placing our faith. Not in our stuff, not in what we have, but in Christ and in Him crucified. And yet we return to the fact that we still need our stuff. But Jesus says something else at the end of this parable. You're a fool if you lay up treasure for yourself and you are not rich. Or God. Well, does that simply mean to up your offering? Well, I kind of like to say that, but it goes deeper than that. What is not a vanity in this world? What around us, what even in this building, is not vanity? Well, look around you. Look at the people sitting next to you. Drive on hope. Exactly. Thank you for listening to my sermon. I appreciate that. Drive on home. Maybe look under the bridge and you'll see maybe a sleeping bag. You'll look around you and you'll see people, maybe in your own homes and your own families, struggling with addiction. You'll see widows alone. People going through untold medical crises and catastrophes. This isn't just third world stuff. This is right here in our backyard. And the people around us, be they rich or poor, you, dear saint, in the midst of a world filled with vanity, are not vanity. You are God's dear child. God had you in mind from the creation of the world and everyone else on this green earth. And when we are rich toward others, we are rich toward God. Because we see the lives of others, people created in God's image. And when we love them as Christ has loved us, we act for them as God's hands, as his feet, even as his voice, speaking words of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Because you see, dear saints, that is not vanity. That is something that will not only just last a lifetime, but last an eternity. Because when we proclaim Jesus in our words and actions, and yes, even in our resources, financial or otherwise, we're able to proclaim the word of God. And we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, and it is our faith that saves us. It is a gift of God, and that is no vanity. For it lasts a lifetime. And beyond our life, on into eternity. So in a world filled with vanity, and we know it, we turn on the TV and we see ads for stuff, we're online ads for stuff. People always are trying to sell you stuff, be it physical things or even a lifestyle. Just as you see that this week, remember, it's all vanity. It will not last eternity. You will, though. You are no vanity, and neither are the people around you. And if indeed they are not vanity, if indeed you are not vanity, well, shall we not treat them as Christ has treated us? By giving fully of ourselves for the sake of our neighbor and for the sake of God. Time is short, dear saints. Time is short, and I know for some folks here, you feel that. 
that there is comfort in terror, that eternity is so very long. Comfort, for we who are gathered here know that we are saved, that we have eternal life, that our sins are forgiven, even our failure to give as Jesus gives and to love as Jesus loves. And it can be terror too. And if there is terror in your hearts this day at the thought of eternity, know this, that God invites you today to place your faith in Jesus Christ, to assure you that your sins are forgiven, that eternal life is yours, that you are not vanity. You have been bought with a priceless price. You have been given a great reward, forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. For Jesus Christ has brought you to peace with God. A peace which passes all understanding, keeping our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for giving us so much. We give you thanks for allowing us to be born in this land, which is truly a land of plenty. Even those who are least well off here in America are in around the world so much better off than so many. We give you thanks for that. And we pray, Lord, that you would give us eyes to see the need in those around us. For we know that true treasure is not found in pennies, but in people. True treasure is not found in how much stuff we have, but how many people that we impact. For when we impact people, you are working through us and we are laying up treasure in heaven. Keep us ever mindful of this. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in our fellowship who are sick or suffering or injured, Lord, be with them, guide them, be especially with one of our members who is in hospital right now. We give you thanks for seeing her through this far uh, after her fall, and we pray that you would uh, continue to uh, bless her and strengthen her day by day. We pray, Lord, for our communities of Dunkirk, Fredonia, Sunni, Fredonia, and beyond for our nation and our world, Lord, bring peace in our time. All this we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. God bless you, be with you, and go with you this day. I'll see you down the line soon. Bye-bye now.